My latest book is called Fear of Dying. So I have three books now that are called Fear of Something. Fear of Flying, my first novel. Uh, Fear of 50, a memoir. And now Fear of Dying. The working title of this book was not Fear of Dying. It was Happily Married Woman. <laughs> <clears throat> and it was about a woman who is married to a much older man, and she adores him. But as she turns 60, she sees many of her friends dying. She sees her parents failing, and she wants to live. And if you live in good health to the age of 60, 65, 70, you discover that life is rich, life is beautiful, but you are surrounded by death. And you have to make sense of mortality because you're surrounded by mortality. So the heroine of this novel, Vanessa, Vanessa Wonderman, whose best friend is Isadora Wing of Fear of Flying fame, is turning 60, still beautiful, still passionate, and yet coping with mortality. Um, you know, the role of the poet, I started as a poet. I've never ceased to be a poet. What is poetry about? Love and death. That, those are the only subjects. But as you get older, your focus on mortality inevitably becomes sharper. It must be, because you realize you're not immune to mortality. So I'm going to give you a taste of fear of dying. I used to love the power I had over men. Walking down the street, my mandolin-shaped ass swaying and swinging to their backward eyes. How strange that I only completely knew this power when it was gone or transferred to my daughter, all male eyes on her nubile, twenty-ish body, promising babies. I miss this power. It seemed that the things that had come to replace it, marriage, maternity, the wisdom of the mature woman, ugh, I hate that phrase, weren't worth the candle. Ah, the candle standing up, burning for me, full of sound and fury, signifying everything. I know I should fade away like a good old girl and spare my daughter the embarrassments of my passions, but I can't any more than I can conveniently die. Life is passion, but now I know what passion costs, so it's hard to be so carefree anymore. But was I ever carefree? Was anyone? Wasn't love always an exploding cigar? Didn't Gypsy Rose Lee say, God is love, but get it in writing? <laughs> and didn't Fanny Bryce say, love is like a card trick. Once you know how it works, it's no fun anymore. <laughs> Those old broads knew a thing or two. And did they give up? Never. I'm not going to tell you yet how old I am or how many times I've been married. I have decided never to get any older than 50. My husband and I read the obituaries together more often than we have sex. I'm only going to say that when all the troubles of my family of origin engulfed me, and I realized that my marriage could not save me, I reached a point where I was just unhinged enough to put the following ad 
on ziplist.com, a sex site on the internet. Happily married women with extra erotic energy seeks happily married man to share same. Come celebrate Eros one afternoon per week. Discretion guaranteed by a playful, pretty, imaginative, witty woman. Send email and recent picture, New York area. Talk about a woman on the verge of a nervous breakdown. It was autumn in New York, a season of mellow mist, Jewish holidays, and $5,000 a plate benefits for chic diseases. A time of new beginnings, Yom Kippur, starting over, Rosh Hashanah, and laying in acorns against a barren winter. When I placed the ad, I had thought of myself as a sophisticate, coolly interviewing lovers. But now, I was suddenly overcome with panic. I began fantasizing about what sort of creeps, losers, retreads, extortionists, and homicidal maniacs such an ad would attract. And then I got so busy with calls from my ailing parents and pregnant daughter that I forgot all about it. A few minutes went by, then suddenly the responses poured out of the internet like coins out of a slot machine. I was almost afraid to look. After a couple of beats, I couldn't resist. It was like hoping I had won the lottery. The first response showed a scanned Polaroid of an erect penis, <laughs> a tawny, uncircumcised specimen with a drop of dew winking at the tip. <laughs> Under the photo, on the white border, was scrawled, without Viagra. <clears throat> The accompanying email was concise. I like your style. I have always risen for assertive women. Send nude shot and measurements. <clears throat> the next one began like this. Dear seeker, sometimes we think it's carnality we want when actually we long for Jesus. We discover that if we open our hearts and let him in, all sorts of satisfaction undreamt of can be ours. Perhaps you think you are seeking arrows, but Thanatos is what you really seek. In Jesus, there is eternal life. He is the lover who never disappoints, the friend who is loyal forever. It would be an honor to meet and counsel you. A telephone number was proffered, 1-800-JESUS-FOR-YOU. <laughs> I threw all the responses in the virtual garbage can, deleted them, and, shot, and shut down the computer. That was the end of it, I thought, deluding myself. I must have been insane to give an authentic email address. I went about my wife life like an automaton. I had always been impulsive, and impulsive people know how to back away from their impulses. Sex was trouble at any age. But at 60, oops, I gave it away. It was a joke. Women were not allowed to be sexy at 60. We were supposed to become grandmothers and retreat into serene sexlessness. Sex was for 20, 30, 40, even 50. Sex at 60 was an embarrassment. Even if you still looked good, you knew too much. You knew all the things that could go wrong, all the cons you could set yourself up for, all the dangers of playing with strangers. You knew discretion was a dream. And now my email was out there for all the fishers and pishers, and so on. So 
Vanessa begins by going on the internet, which by the way, I have never done, <laughs> looking for passion. But I'm a good researcher, so I know people do this. But she's looking for passion, and her parents are dying. Her daughter's about to have a baby. Her husband is old and needs caring for, and she's having these fantasies. And that's where the book begins, Woman on the Verge of a Nervous Breakdown. And in the course of her journey, she discovers what matters and what doesn't matter. She discovers what it means to be a grandmother. She discovers how your view of the world changes when you become aware of mortality and it it's stronger and stronger in your life. And she makes a journey which ultimately ends in India, where we always go when we need to find enlightenment, of course. Um, I usually start my novels with a character in a predicament. Without a predicament, there is no story. With a problem that has to be solved. And Vanessa's problem is the problem we all face, mortality. And because I see the world both humorously and tragically, otherwise I wouldn't be standing there here tonight if I didn't have a sense of humor. It saved my life so many times. But it's the story of how an older woman comes to terms with her life. Of course, it could be the story of an older man, although the details would be different. And I feel at this point in my life that life gets better as you get older. Your judgment is better. Your passion is greater. Your ability to understand life is greater than ever before. I'm not afraid of getting older, and I am surely not afraid of death. I feel that the anticipation of death is more fearsome than death itself. So in this book, I try to come to terms with what it means to be an older woman. I think that's a missing book in the pantheon of books. Once my earliest editor said to me, do you know, Erica, there's never been a bestseller about a woman over 40? <laughs> and I said to her, then I must write it. And what I've tried to do throughout my career is to write the books that are missing from our classic books, to write the books that don't yet exist. If the book doesn't exist, then it's the book I want to write. And Fear of Dying is, is really about that. It's an attempt to fill in that story, which I think has been missing from our literature. Um, people say, how can you be so brave? How can I not? Um, it's hard enough to be a human being in, in a very difficult world. But the only way to survive being a human being, besides humor, which is so important to me, the only way to survive being a human being is to know yourself and thereby to know other people. So this book is an attempt to understand myself and others and to write the book that doesn't yet exist. I hope it will make you laugh and cry. All I want from my readers is for them to laugh and cry. Thank you so much.